Hi guys, this is Gail with Gail Southern Living. I am going to be starting a new segment called Gail's Tales. Uh, now I was inspired with this idea from Alicia from Country Mama Musings and I will link her channel in the description box. So she has lives where she tells funny stories and sometimes serious stories. So I wanted to do that. Uh, some of my stories are funny, you know, some of them are hilarious, and some of them are actually tragic. Um, who, you know, things that happened to me that made me who I am. So I did a poll and I wanted to find out what story you guys wanted to hear first. So uh, on the poll so far, you have chosen that you wanted to hear about my tragedy at 17. Okay, so this is my story. Um, uh, well, I kind of have to start with the, you know, kind of where I'm coming from with it. <clears throat> so I grew up at home with an alcoholic father. Uh, he was a very loving father and he took really good care of us. Um, but he was a little bit inconsistent with the rules and uh, would occasionally get very angry and it scared me. And so um, maybe that's a little bit why I'm, I'm kind of insecure, I guess you would say. So um, at 17 years old, um, I was a junior in high school. Uh, I chose to leave home and I stayed with my older sister and but I kept going to school and I had a job at a fast food place and uh, I would walk to school every morning uh, and it was a good 30 to 45 minute walk ish I don't remember exactly but it was probably more like 45 minutes maybe longer so anyway, I had to walk all the way down these busy streets and across a railroad track and down this alley to get to my school. So I'm walking as I normally do and um, I'm by myself and um, that year I had chosen to do the work program where you, you do zero hours, so you do the hour before school starts so that you can get off early and go to school and earn your wages. And I chose that actually before I left my parents' house. So I was walking to school that morning and I was literally almost there. And at the time there was a little convenience store uh, right here and then there was an alley and then a street and then the school. So I was pretty close. I was within five or seven minutes from the school. So um, I was walking along, I had my purse, I probably had some books, um, and I was walking along and I felt like somebody was behind me. And I, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I really, I should have just took off running at that point, right? So, but I didn't run. And the person just got closer and closer and closer to me. Eventually, the person, who was a man, um, got right up to me, and the first thing he did was grab my butt, and then uh, there was a fence there. It was right by a fence, because it was an alley, and he pushed me real hard. I hit the fence and slid down. He grabbed my purse. He hesitated, and then he took off with my purse. So he mugged me, basically. And um, I did have money in my purse because remember I was working. And I had brought my money to work that day for picture day. And uh, so I kept walking and I reached my zero hour class and I sat there in my class. Well, well let me go back just a little bit. Um, right after it happened, you know, I got up and I just continued walking to school and I tried to scream, uh, but I opened my mouth like, and nothing came out at all. So I kept on walking and I got to school and my teacher in my zero hour class said, 
is something wrong? And I proceeded to tell him what happened. And I want to say there was nobody else there. Or maybe there was only one or two people there. But I must have felt comfortable enough to talk. And so I told him and he sent me to the principal's office to uh, file a police report. So I did file a police report and the, um, the police went through the dumpster seeing if maybe he had pulled out my wallet or the money and, and uh, stashed it in the uh, dumpster somewhere. But they didn't didn't ever find my purse. Um, the money wasn't the real tragedy out of that. <laughs> well, the minor tragedy out of that was that I lost all of my pictures because I had all of my friends pictures in there that they had given me. Um, and so all those pictures are gone. I don't have those. They don't exist anymore. They're just gone. The more major tragedy of it is that I was staying with my sister and after that happened I was afraid to keep walking to school and you know I was only 17 years old I was you know I was naive I wasn't fully thinking um, so I actually ended up quitting school and uh, my grandfather was not very happy about this when I told him but he understood because you know, I was doing it partially because of fear. I didn't have a car, you know, I had a little cruddy job, so I didn't make a lot of money. So, uh, he, uh, my grandpa, which is my mom's mom, I called him Peppa, he uh, talked me into um, going ahead and getting my GE done. As a matter of fact, he paid for it. So I went in. And because I did it so soon after quitting school, all the information was still up here. So I basically took the test and passed it and received my GED. So it was just that easy because I did it right after, right after leaving school because of my grandpa. So um, then later on in my life, uh, I took photography classes, I took uh, computer classes, and then later on went on and did a seven month uh, program uh, for medical coding and billing, which I did work in that field for about 10 to 12 years. And so I, you know, I did go on and do some things in my life and um, that is part of the reason that I am the way I am. And I still sometimes when walking, Still have a little bit of that there when I feel like somebody's behind me sometimes I have to turn around and and look to make to see who's there and even like when I was walking around the park um, I would get that feeling somebody was behind me and I would have to stop and sit down for a while and watch the person go by because I felt like somebody was behind me so that's kind of really haunted me for a long time so that is my tragedy from uh, from when I was 17. That's what happened to me that uh, molded the person that I am. And so uh, I'm a very sensitive person and uh, but I do tend to uh, keep going. I do tend to keep going even when things are tough. I always make the best of things. That's just what I do. That's the way I'm programmed. And uh, uh, I don't see things as half empty. I see them as, oh, maybe I can make that better somehow, you know. So everything is something that can be improved and something that can be worked on. So this is my first uh, edition of Gail's Tales. Not all of the story are tragedy stories. Some of them are funny. Some of them are just, you know, just interesting stories. Uh, so let me know if you've enjoyed this story. And... Uh, I will continue to tell tell them. Uh, I will put them in a playlist called Gail's Tales, so you can check out all my Gail's Tales. And uh, you guys have a great day. Be blessed. Do something kind, guys.